Good afternoon, everyone. Before we begin, I would like to ask everyone to, here to please stand and join us in signing our nation's Pledge of Allegiance. I would also like to invite Ms. Michaela Miato, who is the granddaughter of one of our honorees, to come to the podium. She will be leading us in our pledge today. Thank you, Michaela. Thank you, everyone. Everyone, please have a seat. Details. Seats. Once again, good afternoon, and thank you for being here today. My name is Lieutenant Ricard Resendiz. On behalf of the New Bedford Police Department, I would like to welcome everyone here this afternoon for our fifth promotional ceremony. I would like to thank the family and friends of my officers and also my fellow colleagues for being here today and to show us support for the officers who are being promoted. I would also like to recognize the following city officials who are joining us here today. The Honorable Mayor of New Bedford, Mayor John Mitchell, City Council President Joseph Lopes, City Councilor Brian Gomes, and City Councilor Linda Morad. We are here this afternoon to celebrate the promotions of the following officers. Lieutenant Amancio Mello, promotion to captain. Sergeant Robert Holmes, promotion to lieutenant. And Detective Paul Fonseca, promotion to sergeant. Before we start the ceremony, I'd like to invite our police chaplain, Reverend David Lima, to the podium to say a few words and to lead us in prayer. Reverend. First, I'd like to congratulate those who are being promoted today. The Bible talks about the fact that our gifts bring us before men and leaders, and that our gift ends up making a place for us. Uh, whenever anybody works hard to be promoted, to go through the, the, the classes, the studying, everything else, the preparation, and then to take the responsibility it is worthy of honor, and it's worthy for us to be here to not only congratulate them, but to thank them for their service and for the days ahead, which I'm sure the chief will be explaining all that that they'll be going through. So let us bow our heads so we can pray. Lord, as we gather here this afternoon, we ask your blessing upon these proceedings, but not only just for today, but for the future, that you would be able to lead these men to lead others. That's the position of leadership, to be able to understand the responsibility, the accountability, and to know how to work with not only the people that are under them that they have to work for, work with, to know the leadership accord above them also, but also to understand that their service is to the community and that they have to build not only the rapport and the capability of communication, but they also have to do it in such a way that people feel safe and secure. Lord, we ask for wisdom for these men in doing the work that they're doing, patience as they learn to do it, and we ask that we would all be in prayer. We will continue to support them and lift them up every day so that they would know that they have a community that surrounds them with prayer, cares about what they're doing, and cares about each and every officer here in the Bedford Police Department. We thank you for this as we thank you for all things. In the name of Jesus, us, our Lord, amen. Thank you, Reverend. I would now like to invite our Honorable Mayor, Mayor John Mitchell, to the podium to say a few words. Mayor. Thank you, Lieutenant Resendis, and uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, as important as and as solemn as this ceremony is, it is a day of celebration, and uh, it's great to see, especially family members and colleagues, come out to support 
those that we are honoring today. Um, I want to thank right up front Chief Cadero for making this ceremony a, a, uh, a regular event. Um, this is, uh, it's important to recognize excellence. Our, our police department is dedicated uh, to high standards of performance and professionalism, and uh, the chief has, has made it a, a point uh, in his leadership uh, that uh, good performance and promotion and those milestones in one's career should be widely recognized. So, Chief, I really want to thank you for, for your leadership uh, today and every day in that way, and I want to thank the support of City Council, of, of course, uh, Councilors Gomes, Lopes, and Morad are here in support uh, and are great supporters of uh, the department. Uh, most of all, I, I really want to, uh, I really want to congratulate those who are being promoted today, um, Captain Mello, um, Lieutenant Holmes, and Sergeant Fonseca. Uh, all of you, all three of you have uh, stood out in, in terms of your performance, but also, or most importantly, your dedication um, to serving the community and to making New Bedford a better and safer place to live. I also want to thank your families. Um, as you know, I have the privilege of speaking at swearing-in ceremonies uh, from time to time uh, of police officers. And one of the things that I, I know and it bears repeating today is that police work is very difficult, um, especially today, uh, where, there's, where you're asked to uh, defend the community against dangerous individuals. Uh, but to do it with uh, a smile on your face sometimes. Uh, the police officers are expected to be diplomats and therapists, uh, as well as the, the protectors and guardians of our community. And these require a broad set of skills, and it's hard, and you have to go home and wake up the next morning and do it again. And um, any police officer will tell you, and the family members here uh, know, and the family members of our department know, that the family is the backstop. Um, when a, you have a job as stressful as police officer, you need that support of home, at home to be successful. And so I want to thank all of you for, for that support uh, along the way. I know you're very proud today, as you should be, but also know that this is, all, this is your day as well. And I also want to thank uh, the, the officers who are in attendance today uh, for their support of their colleagues for showing up at, at a moment like this. It means a lot to them, I know. Um, all of you, we are charged uh, with, uh, with the business of keeping our residents safe. That is, for all the things we do as a city, uh, the first order of business is safety. And that's, that's what we are committed to day in and day out. The conditions may change, the challenges will change, but we've got to continue to confront them as time goes on so that our, our city can continue to thrive. So I want to thank all of you from the chief on down uh, for making that happen today. Thank you. I would now like to invite City Council President Joseph Lopes to this podium, please. It is uh, my honor to speak real briefly on behalf of the City Council. Uh, Council Gomes, Council Morad, and former Mayor Kalis is here as well. Uh, it is truly an honor to be here tonight. Uh, it's a special honor because one of the persons that's getting promoted is a, a very old friend. I've been blessed to call uh, several members of the my friends, my brothers, as, as other members of City Council are. But today to see an actual friend, someone that I knew would be a sergeant one day, uh, to be promoted and to see what the struggles he's gone through, his family has gone through. I can only imagine that multiplied by 300 officers across the city and what their families go through every day, knowing what's gonna happen, what's not gonna happen, waiting for the, the husband or the wife to come home with the brother or the sister. It is truly an honorable job. It's a job that not everybody wants to do, uh, but it's a job that they do proudly, and I'm proud to call them my friends, but I'm also proud to call one a brother that I love dearly, and I wish him all the best of luck, each and every one. He's going to get a little upset with me, but I don't care. But I wish everyone the best of luck. Congratulations on your promotions. All well earned, and thank you, the Chief, for doing this. This is truly an amazing thing to do to recognize all the officers getting promoted, and thank you, the Mayor, for attending.
Thank you, Council Lopes. I would now like to introduce uh, Chief of Police, Chief Joseph Kidario, for the presentation of the badges. Chief. First, welcome uh, to our fifth uh, ceremony, uh, promotional ceremony. I want to thank Mayor Mitchell, of course, for uh, continuing to support our police department and supporting uh, these promotions. As most know, he is the appointing authority, and these promotions don't happen without his approval, so I, I appreciate that. Mayor, it's much needed. Uh, these promotions are much needed this time. I'd also like to thank uh, Councilor President Lopes, Councilor Gomes, Councilor Morad, and the other councilors that are not here, that generally I know they would be if they could, would have been very supportive of the police department. I, I truly appreciate uh, that support that you give us. I'd also like to welcome former Mayor Kalis, who's uh, been a longtime friend, uh, former Judge Lance Garth, who's also here with us. I'd also like to recognize one of our very famous retirees, Alan Mills. It's always a pleasure to see you here. Family, of course, friends uh, and, and family, most importantly, for what you've endured all these years, especially while uh, all three of our uh, promotions, what they've gone through, preparing for these exams, taking the tests, waiting, waiting, wondering, the anxiety goes with it. Uh, so I thank you for the support that you've given them, the support that you're going to give them going forward because they are all going to be taking uh, new challenges with new responsibilities. And of course, I cannot leave out my other family, our brother officers who are mostly in the back there, a lot of our plain clothes officers for the work that you do every day to ensure that our city is safe uh, all the time. I know the long hours, the dedication, the commitment, and the personal sacrifice that you put out there every day. So I thank you very much for being here and the work they do every day. So uh, just a few words uh, about our promotions and what's going to take place here. Uh, Paul Fonseca, uh, directing this right to you because you're taking the biggest step uh, when we make these promotions. Anybody that's read the promotional exams, I know any uh, supervision of police, the biggest step you take is from going from being one of the guys to now the supervisor, the guy that gets all the questions. Can I kick the door in? Can I do this? Can I do that? It's the biggest step, the biggest change that takes place in our promotional uh, organization. So Paul, you got some big changes coming. It's a big change for you, it's a big leap, but I know you're up for the challenges. I remember when you were working uh, downtown not too long ago as our community policing officer in CP 13, I believe it was, 14. 14, uh, it's, it's a big change, we've always been a hot charger and uh, it requires you to change with this new job. I'm sure you're already hearing it. People say, oh, come on, Sarge, you've already changed, but the reality is you have to change. You have to change to fit the new position that you're taking. Without it, you will not progress, and I just want to quote real quickly Barack Obama. This is what he says about change. Change will not come if we wait for some other person or some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek, and that is so true, Paul, and and also Bobby and Amos, who as we're coming up through the ranks and we're here, we're saying, well, if I was in that position, this is what I would do. If I could change things, that's what I would do. Well, now you're in a position to bring that change in your small neck of the woods in the police department. The change that you said you want, the change that you'd make if you were in that position, so now you can do it. Uh, you can be the change that you want in the department. And you're gonna do that by leading, by example. It's not easy because you'll be challenged, you'll be criticized for it. But I tell you, it's worthwhile because that's a change that we need to continue to evolve to become the department that we want our department to be. It's a great department. It can only get better. And it's dependent upon you being the change that you want to see in the department, a positive change, a positive energy. Uh, we've got to eradicate any negativity with your positiveness. So uh, I know it's a big change, and I know you're up to the challenge. Leadership, a lot of books have been written about it. There's no clear science on how to be a leader. But we do know a few things that make good leaders. One, you have to care for your people. And caring isn't just being a yes person and closing your eyes when they're not necessarily, necessarily doing what you want them to do or doing the right thing. Caring is having that tough conversation. Caring is getting people in line to do what they need to do to keep them on track. Caring is to be a little sympathetic and empathetic on what people under your command are going through in their personal life and professionally. Caring is about trying to help them reach the goals that they want to as the goals you reach today and other goals that you want to reach. 
Caring is having some tough love for your people. Sometimes caring is giving them a hug too. It's about being fair. Fair with your people, I treat everybody the same way. With the carrot and the stick. When they've done right, praise lavishly and publicly. And when they're not doing the right thing, or when you direction you want to see them going in, you gotta use the stick privately. There's no sense trying to embarrass people. There's no good that comes from that. But you need to be firm and consistent and treat everybody the same, which is not easy as well. Personalities can come into play sometimes. Hold yourself to a high standard. Because when you hold yourself to that standard, you raise the bar for everybody else that's around you. There's no sense telling people how to be when you can't be what you want them to be. Being a leader <clears throat> is it's difficult, but it is truly a privilege. It's a privilege to lead the people that trust you. It's a privilege to be able to impact people's lives positively, the people that you lead, and the people that you're leading that they serve. It's an honor to do that. And I know you're going to take that to heart when you're out there every day. Leadership, and I'm going to quote also Mick Romney because I just love uh, quotes, and he says, leadership is about taking responsibility, not making excuses. When things don't go right, it's not pointing why they didn't go right, it's taking responsibility for saying what you got to do to make it right so that doesn't happen again. Ultimately, as uh, Chris Hatfield said, ultimate leadership is not about glorious crowning acts, it's about keeping your team focused on a goal and motivated to do their best to achieve. It's especially when the stakes are high and the consequences really matter. And I'll tell you, the consequences really do matter. What we do really matters out there every day. People depend on us. Lives are dependent upon us, sometimes our own. I continue the quote. It is about laying the groundwork for other success and then standing back and letting that shine. That's what it takes to be a leader. When you go out there, you have all these folks that are looking up to you. You want them to be successful. You gotta give them the tools, help them fine tune those skills. And then you have to deal with the part about failure. Failure is inevitable. There are not too many people that any of us know in this world who have not failed. You will fail. Don't be afraid of failure, embrace failure. Embrace it, recognize it, and then use it as your stepping stones to build a recipe for success. Without failure, we don't progress. Michael Jordan said, I can't accept failure. Everyone fails at something, but I cannot accept not trying. And we've seen that many times. We've seen it many times, folks, that just stop trying. That is failure. Failure to try because of failure, a fear of failure or paralysis by fear of failure is true failure. Don't be afraid of it. Embrace it. We're here to support you. All of us were a team, from the chief, the deputy chief, from your fellow captains, your fellow lieutenants, your captains, and you and your subordinates. We're here to work together, to pick you up when you're down, to pick those up that are down, to guide them, redirect them, and re-energize them in the right direction when they do something wrong. You've never been on a field when someone missed a shot and said, hey, you stink. You missed a shot and said, it's all right, you'll get the next one. Or they struck at the baseball pitch. You said, that's all right, hang in there, you're gonna get the next ball. That's what we're supposed to be, cheering each other on, not pointing out what we didn't do right. Teamwork, without teamwork we can't do anything. There's not one of us that can reach any level of success that we hope to gain. We have to work together, from the cadets, patrol officers, to our civilian employees, to every rank, to our partners in the community, some of them are here, Pam and Hewitt, with SSYI United Way. It requires all of us working together collectively, as a department, as a city, a city of one, with government, with the, you know, the city council, as the mayor's office, together is how we all make a difference. Not one, not two, all of us. And that's what I hope you take back to your commands and whatever assignment you have coming out of these promotions in your future career. Continue to foster good teamwork, because together we'll do it. And I'm gonna give you another quote from Simon Manuary. Creating a better world requires teamwork partnership and collaboration. As we need an entire army of companies to work together to build a better world within the next few decades, this means corporations must embrace the benefits of cooperating with one another. There are no true words. Without cooperation and collaboration, there is no teamwork. Unity, unity is strength. Together, we get the job done. We see it all the time from the very complex investigations that our detectives do 
Uh, Steve Wyman's back there worked on the serial arson case, or homicides, or robberies, uh, drug cases. It takes a team of unity coming together, communicating, all working towards one goal. And that's how things get done around here. Responsibility. It's a great responsibility that you guys are taking on today. Those uh, chevrons uh, for the sergeant uh, chevrons for Sergeant Fonseca or the boss for Lieutenant Holmes and Captain Mello, they look like, but they weigh heavy. They weigh heavy on your heart. They weigh heavy on your conscience, trying to make the right decision every day for the people that work with you, for you, the community that we serve, the community that depends upon us. It's a big responsibility. I know you're up for the task. And I say again, you're not alone. We're all here with you. Community policing, it's a philosophy that I know each one of you embrace. Paul, you lived it, you're a community policing officer, so you get it. I hope you take back to your commands and we all have to embrace this philosophy and embrace our community. We serve the community, they don't serve us. At the end of the day, we're trying to make this a safer community. We want to serve them better, with a high level of quality, every single day. That only comes with embracing the community philosophy every single day, trying to solve problems, not just go there, do a hit and run. Go there, listen to people, care about what they're enduring, what that's going on in their life. And that requires you from a leadership position to embody community policing philosophy. I ask you to decide today when you go out there to do the right thing. I know it's not easy, believe me. I feel it every day, but it's worth it. It's worth it to do the right thing, to make those tough decisions. And I know you're up for it. We're gonna give you the training you need, the support that you need, and as Reverend Lima had spoke a little bit about today, we're gonna to pray for you. We're gonna pray for you, and I know you're gonna be successful, and the people on your command are gonna be successful, because you wanted this. You worked hard for it your whole career. You have incredible work ethics, all three of you. And I'll talk a little bit about that in a minute. Uh, so I, uh, I congratulate you, and I'm just gonna run real quick. Uh, if you'll bear with me, a little bit about each one of our candidates. First of all, soon to be Captain Mello, came on the job 28 years ago. I first met Amos Mello, he was my neighbor when I moved into the neighborhood up there, and he was trying to get on a job, and as far as I know, and anybody knows, Amos, he has an incredible work ethic. He's, he's meticulous, meticulously organized. To the point I don't know if he has OCD. Pam could probably tell us a little bit about that. But uh, an incredible hard worker, and he demonstrated that his whole career. Lance Scott here, former judge, knows when, uh, when he was practicing law and he was a prosecutor, I'm sure he had a lot of dealings with him when he was a detective in a narcotics unit. Doing a lot of cases, I know he worked there with Deputy Chief Paul Oliveira. Worked very hard then. And then he was promoted to Sergeant, was in the Internal Affairs Unit for a bit. And then I had the honor of working with Sergeant Mello then in our, in our Family Service Unit, Juvenile Sexual Assault and Domestic Violence Unit, which now his wife, Pam Mello, is in charge of things go full circle. And uh, we had good times there, and he worked very hard, and a lot of good things happened there. And we had a lot of fun with Amos. He's a prankster, if you don't know Amos. He loves to prank. And I if you haven't been a victim of him doing some of his uh, crop dusting, then uh, it'd be a surprise, because uh, there's not too many people <laughs> escaping. Uh, and then from there, we went back to uniform, and then he took over the school resource uh, officer program when uh, Sergeant Rivera retired. He did an incredible job there. Anybody that worked with him in the school department would attest to that. Uh, he brings a level of professionalism wherever he goes. And then he was promoted lieutenant in uniform for a bit. We worked again in Station 1 together, and I was honored as to have him as uh, my administrative assistant in our office where he did incredible work for the last year and, and a few months. As Pam would tell you, especially with ISSYI program, our Shannon Grant, turning that around amongst uh, a lot of the stuff we did with our public information office. Uh, Honestly, Amos, it's, a, it's an honor to be here today with you for this special moment. To have your dad here, Mr. Mello, uh, to be here present is a really special moment. Congratulations. Uh, he also received a ton of awards during his time here. He received a life-saving award for helping an occupant in the fire in 91, honorable service award, uh, preventing a deadly encounter in 94, an incredible nice thank you from the Bonsville County Sheriff from the Junior Citizens Police Academy that we ran together back in 01. In 02, a state senate official citation, commitment, and dedication of service to the youth of the Greater New Bedford Award. In 04, thank you from Child and Family Services. In 210, another 
Thank you from the Greater New Bedford Regional Vocational Technical High School. And to Tim, you received another thank you note for the special lockdown drills you did at the New Bedford Public Schools in 2016. And thank you from Dennis Farrier, City Clerk's Office, for the active shooter training that he did. And in 2017, he received a special letter from uh, then Mayor, uh, former Mayor Kalos from the Registry of Deeds for his active shooter training class. And I'm sure there's many more accolades in his folder that we didn't put in here. So uh, as you can see, he is a quality uh, candidate and has been a quality uh, employee for the P uh, police department and a servant of our city. So I'm very proud, Amos, to be here with you today. And of course, we have Robert Holmes. 31 years he's been on a job. He came on as a cadet in, in 1986. He was assigned um, to the police academy for a short stint, appointed as a police officer in 1989 and he did some detective work in domestic violence. He was one of the first detectives, if I remember correctly, for a program that was the first of its kind in the state, the domestic violence unit. Uh, the first male detective, for sure, without question, right? A little nod, right, yes. He, he was very passionate about that work, and I remember it was, it was a new unit, he took a little bit of criticism, but that didn't bother him. He's, Bobby Holmes is tough, I'll say that about that. I think Alan Mills kind of gave him some good tutoring. Uh, and then he went to the detective division, did some good work there, night detectives. Uh, and then he was promoted to sergeant in 2007. And he's been in our core liaison, liaison uh, officer since 2009. Uh, he received a thank you note in 1991 from a, for assisting a broken down motorist. That's the way Bobby is, he'll stop. And I'm sure he did that many times off duty as well. In 94, thank you for assisting the domestic violence victim, not surprisingly, uh, seeing that he worked in that unit. A thank you in 1994 from the Women's Center. In 92, he received a life saving award from attempted suicide. In 03, a thank you for assisting an auto accident victim. In 04, another thank you for assisting stolen property victim. Now, I've worked with Bobby Holmes uh, in uniform a long time ago, and we've had many, many conversations. Uh, what I can tell you about Bobby, he's got a strong, strong work ethic as well. He's a tough, he's a tough guy, but a big heart. He's a good man, and I, I too am very proud to add him to our ranks of a superior rank of lieutenant. It's an it's honor and a privilege, Bobby. And of course, last but not least, Paul Fonseca. He came on in 2001, he's been with us for 16 years. He worked for me directly as our community policing officer when we had uh, back in CP14, and he was a high charger. Uh, Paul was able to embody the community policing philosophy twofold. He knew how to use the stick, and he knew how to use the carrot. He knew how to talk to people, build relationships, and he knew when it was time to get those handcuffs off and lock people up. He knew how to do it, and he did it very, very well. And I, I was sad to see when he left that unit uh, to go to another assignment in 2013 to the Organized Crime Intelligence Bureau Narcotics Unit. He went over there to be a detective where he did a great job, as he always has. And uh, he's uh, been in our detective unit working on violent crimes, homicides, and he's done an incredible job. And he's been working long and hard hours. Also very articulate, uh, like a hound dog. He puts his nose to it and he keeps going. Uh, he's done an incredible job. A few of his awards and accolades, to mention a few in 2005. He received the Police Certificate Accommodation for a Public Safety Award in 2006, the Memphis Police Certificate of Accommodation for a Life Saving Award in 2008. Thank you for assisting in a apprehension of males breaking into the vehicle on the Elm Street garage. I remember that. We were having a, a slew of breaks there. In 06, a thank you for South Shore Housing for assisting a victim. In 2006, a thank you for assisting the hit-and-run victim. In 2008, a thank you for the Muscat Dystrophy Association, New Bedford's Most Wanted Lockup Program. In 08, another thank you for volunteering the Buzzards Bay Watershed Ride. In 2012, the Mass Police Association Medal of Valor action in the line of duty, and that's a pretty big one. Paul, I gotta tell you, it is an honor to be here with you as well. I know you're gonna do great things. You've been, only been on a job 16 years, so you got a, a ways to go, uh, but I know you're gonna, you're gonna serve as well as you always have, and you're gonna take leadership from your level uh, to where it needs to be motivating and directing the men and women under your command. So congratulations to all three of you. Uh, also, so we can compare the detail with the penny ceremony. Thank you. Detail. Feet.
Captain Amos Mello. Lieutenant Robert Holmes. Sergeant Paul Monsica. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for coming here this afternoon. 
Uh, this concludes our ceremony. I uh, invite everyone to stay for a few minutes and have some pastries. Uh, one of my clerical staff was kind enough to bake a few things, so please help yourselves. Once again, thank you. <laughs>